Okay, this one here is a 2005 Ford Taurus SEL. Of course, it has the check engine light on. 106,000 miles. It is the 24 valve door overhead cam 3 liter. Um, what I have here, well, I ran an emission test on it. If I can find that, because I set, I set another code in the middle of this. But I have the PO193, and if you look at the scanner, there's the 193 fuel rail pressure sensor circuit high input. And the uh, fuel temperature sensor A circuit high input is the uh, 183i set that. This one here has a returnless fuel system, so it just duty cycles the fuel pump. So, what I was doing here, is trying to confirm the failure because this is an emission test light has to be off or fixed or do the waiver like I've done before if I go to my fuel and emissions and go down here to my got fuel tank pressure I'm not concerned about fuel level percentage I'm not really concerned about that there's your fuel pump duty cycle Oops, I don't know and the one I just highlighted is the fuel rail pressure. Now, on the, uh, on my Mitchell diagram, let me get some light here. My Mitchell diagram is calling it the uh, engine injector pressure sensor, the top of engine, the, in, the injector pressure sensor, but it's, it's the same thing, so. I chased all the wiring diagram stuff, so I put little marks in there. The first one is a V, that's your uh, your reference voltage, your 5 volt reference voltage. The R is the return voltage, so pretty much your, your sensor ground. The T is my temperature sensor, and the P is the pressure sensor. So when I unplugged it, they're all in there. I did set that temperature sensor code. Here's the fuel rail pressure sensor. It's just the same thing, got a vacuum, you know, regulator, but it also has the four wires, the, you know, the five volt reference and the return. And then you have the two signal wires, one for fuel temperature and one for pressure. So I'm back probing the pressure one. And if I go, to my live scope here. See, I'm showing 2.8 volts. That looks to be in range, so if I look, you know, on the scanner, I'm at the 2.8, showing my fuel rail pressure at 39, and the fuel pump duty cycle at 25%. So, if I create this vacuum leak, it actually, drop the pressure for a second and then the computer tries to compensate for that and my fuel pump duty cycle percentage goes up to 29% and it's still maintaining the fuel rail pressure around the 3940 which is what it wants and you can see my my voltage went up a couple hundred nothing major and then if I plug it back in you see my let's try to do that a little bit smoother, hold on. So if I create my vacuum leak, or just take the vacuum off of the fuel <clears throat> rail pressure regulator sensor, you can see my voltage changes a little bit. Went up a little higher, my fuel pump pulse width also went higher. It's still maintain, it's trying to maintain the 40 that it once it idles. So if I plug it back in, you see my fuel pressure goes up. My fuel pressure uh, 
duty cycle, the pump goes down for a second and then it equalizes so I have you know, 25% disconnected, 29, 30% back in. So right now it's working, unfortunately. I'd like to fix this car. Uh, like I said, it's here for a waiver so I can address that. Um, if I have to, but I always like to prove it. Now I set that code, if you look at the fuel rail temperature sensor, showing my 109 degrees, if I disconnect and lose everything, of course, I'm gonna show minus 61. So that's how I set that code, just seeing then you have your five, five volts shown on the fuel rail temperature, and you'll see that as well on the, on the lab scope. I also am showing that 5 volts, that's internal, that's not the 5 volt reference, that's the bias voltage inside the computer, it's the same, uh, same reference speed, I think the uh, DPFE sensor, um, throttle position sensor, so that 5 volt runs through, if I was losing my 5 volt reference, I would be setting more than just the one code, so I'm not going to chase that, and I've like I said, I've run into that where I've had DPFE codes where if you unplug it, you see five volts and you think there's something wrong, but that's a normal voltage to see. You're seeing the computer sense voltage, really. So if you don't have five volts on that signal wire unplugged, then there's something wrong in the wiring back towards the computer. So that's kind of verification real quick to determine that you have a good, um, you know, a good, uh, a solid circuit between the computer and the sensor I'm checking. It's not gospel, but it's a quick and dirty. So I plug it back in, I go back to my 2.8 volts. Now if you notice when I had it unplugged as well, do that again, my fuel rail pressure went up to 73 pounds, but the computer, I think it knows that it's an open circuit, so it's not trying to adjust my uh, fuel pump duty cycle. It's just at a fix, you know what I mean? I don't know, like if I rev it, if it's gonna be different between. It's kind of hanging around that 25%, revving the, the engine up. Now if I plug it in, get back to my, you know, showing the, the real fuel pressure and the real voltage when I rev it, the computer's seeing it. I can get my finger in here again. Try in here. Really no change. So I believe the computer is just ignoring it whenever it's unplugged. But the next thing I did, honestly, is because I know there's an issue here. Let's see if I can get uh, both of these showing up. I'm going to concentrate a little bit more on the, the lab reading, and you can see every once in a while there's a little hash running through there, but I believe the sensor is intermittent, and if I tap on the sensor, I can actually get it to stick at the 5 volt. Or I could just sit here and make woodpecker sound, but I kind of... I want to see it broke. You can see there it went up to 5 volts for a second. There we go. I just tapped on it. Now it's stuck at the 5 volts. And if you look at my... Same thing, look at my... Uh, Scan data, you know, seeing the 5.1, and it's showing the 70 some pounds of uh, fuel pressure, which is incorrect, but 
I believe the computer knows that that's just, you know, an open circuit. So I'm only reading right now the computer reference voltage, nothing through the fuel rail pressure. And then if I just give it a, a light tap, it drops back out into range. So there's an intermittent I'm using a plastic pry bar for I'm sure there'll be some more jokes about my hillbilly methods, but I like to see stuff broke. And you know, when you can do it like that without really, you know, clubbing on something just to see if there's an intermittent. Like I said, if I was losing the five volt reference, I would set a couple codes, not just the one. So I believe I just have an open circuit inside the rail pressure sensor. And you know, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. So, you know, if you wanted to check one of these yourself, you're gonna see, like I said, you'll see the um, you'll see the five volt reference on my my V one right there, which is the brown and white wire. So if I go to the brown white wire. There's my five volt reference. And that, like I said, runs to a bunch of other sensors. And then if you want to go to the signal return, see I have four hundredths of a volt. That's pretty insignificant. So there's nothing on the return side. So I'm happy with my five volt reference circuit and sensor ground circuit. And then the fuel rail temperature or the fuel temperature which i believe is that there this so you got the two volts there and that's pretty much matching what i'm seeing so that pretty much confirms the whole circuitry there but like i said you know with my little bit of a plastic persuasion i was able to make that sensor glitch enough to prove that there really is a problem and i feel confident replacing the part so I'll show you the sensor when it comes in I'm gonna put I'm gonna put your car on YouTube well oh. <laughs> just so you can see it whenever I post this video oh. we're just gonna do a couple coils on his car so it's not really I don't have anything interesting as far as the diagnostic end that's already been done you want to say hi? Hi there. Say hi, Will. <laughs> that way your wife can see you'll be famous on YouTube. At least the 4,000 yeah. people, right? Yes. <laughs> All right, I got the new part. Easiest way to do this. Since there's pressure in the system, you're going to squirt fuel with yourself. 40 pounds so according to the wiring diagram fuse number 16 under here this 20 amp I'll pull the fuel pump fuse and you can see my fuel you know pulse duty cycle starting to increase and my fuel pressure is dropping my voltage is dropping and I'm just gonna run it out of fuel so that way now I have less pressure in the fuel rail and I can pull this out without squirting gas everywhere. Whatever it pulls, it's automatically covered. You can use it in short. All right, this is pretty simple. Here's the new part. So I'm assuming the little hole in there is probably for the pressure sensor part and the little nub sticking out of there is most likely the uh, temperature sensor. It's really pretty much as simple as two eight millimeter bolts. Push. 
shouldn't be much fuel pressure in there because I ran it off. Sure, I'll lose a little. The ring's tight. Make sure the O-ring comes out with it. A little bit of lubrication, some fuel from that. New and back in. Simple as that. Simple as that. Simple as that. Alright. So I start it up. Of course. Check the leak. Make sure you don't have any leak. And for verification purposes. You can see I have now three volts and the scanner's reading the same thing probably. See 3.05, 3.04. Oh, that's the temperature, my fault. I think I'm on the temperature wire from the last time. So we go back to the... So, well that accidentally checked that the temperature is working right. And now we're back at the 2.8, 2.7. So I'm not gonna smack this one and make sure that it works because I'm not smacking it. <laughs> so we can call this one fixed. There you go. Thanks for watching.